Right, well, good evening and welcome to the um, second edition of the View from the Allotment End podcast. I hate to use the word vlog, so I'm going with podcast, but whatever we're calling it, we're calling podcast it. Podcast with pictures. Podcast with pictures, oh, yeah. yeah that's right. Right. Vlogs, were not we? Is vlog, it really? Yeah, it's vlog. It sounds too much like bog, so I associate <laughs> it with so much shit, but <laughs> vlog it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, really, we should be, uh, say it's the uh, second issue of. Return of the Bad Casuals, as they would call it in Star Wars. Um, we've, uh, we're indebted to Lee Myers of Hall Road Rangers tonight, which is where we are in the Hall Road Clubhouse. Uh, our thanks to Lee for putting us up, seeing as our plea for uh, uh, a back room in a pub fell on deaf ears, and, and free beer, I think, was the... Uh, <laughs> that was the ride, wasn't it? That, that was the ride, yeah. So, um, we're here at Hall Road. Uh, we're going to touch on... Hall Road later on, we'll do it into three pieces like we normally do. We'll start with uh, North Ferriby United, um, we will do a section on Hull City, and then we will finish off on the uh, local non league scene, um, Hall Road included. Um, since we spoke, uh, a few members of the panel of witness football from Fulham to Falkirk. Um, I've been working on that one all day. So I'll introduce everybody, it's the usual suspects. Uh, to my left is Rick, Rick Skelton, Hull City Live on Twitter. Um, to my left as well is uh, Nick Quantrill, at Nick Quantrill on Twitter. And to my right, the reason we're here, producer Pete, East Old Pete on Twitter. Um, so we'll start off, gents, with uh, North Ferry United. Since we last spoke, I touched on uh, previously that I thought we had five winnable games coming up uh, before sort of the calendar before end of March was out and I don't think I listed Southport in that one um, no. and three or four days later we go and whoop Southport 4-2 I don't think anybody saw that coming least of all us that's why we all stayed away <laughs> um, so <laughs> any, any thoughts on that a, a good win at the, at the time yeah I mean without doubt on it and I think it probably was one of those games that Paradise got against more from really because Southport are kind of in the big time in that bottom seven or eight clubs down there yeah um, but yeah, I mean, four goals away from us, the third, that's not bad, is it? Because, I mean, the, the Achilles heel of the season has obviously been goals after the back some distance. I mean, defensively, I think Steve Alchem's kind of sorted that problem out. Uh, Attacking-wise, th- he's there, isn't it? You know, you've got Reese Thompson, who's got a uh, great pace at our level. Uh, Kev Spates is coming back into his own again. Um, probably like Connor Oliver and stuff, which just hasn't been happening, has it? Uh, then that game, it just seemed to click and everything went right. Um, but then obviously followed up by two more games of goals again. So it's kind of back to square one in that sense, isn't it? But um, yeah, I mean, I think if there's, if there's kind of a plus point to take from last game on Saturday at Braintree, it was the fact that very predominant uh, Again, not scoring, but how often have we come away and said, you know, we've been beaten by a better side on this occasion? I think very well on this side. Yeah, yeah, for change. Yeah, um, well, I've got exactly the same in my notes. <clears throat> well, we follow up a good win away um, with defeats to Macclesfield, which you two were both at. Rick, thoughts on the Maxwell game? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought Maxwell were the better team, to be honest. I thought they were a, a long way the better team as well. Um, Ferriby, coming off the Southport game, which was a real unexpected result, and a brilliant result, I um, really thought they'd, they'd give it a go, but Macclesfield, um, I mean, they had a few old heads, didn't they? Control the midfield. It was, it, was, it was men against boys in physical, yeah, you know, yeah. physical terms, weren't they? They were just a lot bigger, a lot stronger, a lot fitter. Yeah. Where I think that full time club sort of mentality came through. Yeah, and it's one of them where, I mean, Ferriby have been unlucky in a lot of games this season, but that one, it was 2-0 and it could have been 4 or 5 easily. Yeah, I, mean, I think if there's, if there's kind of a, a silver lining from this, it's the fact that you look at the bench on Saturday and there was uh, Matty Templeman, who was kind of not having too much chance ever since his coming in, he's kind of kept on a little bit, but he's clearly a player. Sam Cosgrove was on the bench and he's looked um, at Southport like he was a decent player. Mm-hmm. Um, Stephen Brogan seems to be close to fitness against he'll come back into the side, you've seen him professional. Mm-hmm. Two new lads in midfield coming So, yeah. all of a sudden, I think the picture looks a lot better and a lot stronger. Um, but Dover and Lincoln coming in the next sort of 10 days, that's two very hard games, isn't it? Where the, the yeah, winter's yeah. the season where results are <coughs> now. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've got written on my notes about Tinkler coming in from Middlesbrough. Um, evidently, a good display on Saturday. It seems that way, yeah. I mean, it seems like he's a big lad, isn't he? And he can handle the kind of the physical nature of the football. And that's kind of always a big thing with those players, isn't it? When they come into non league, it's whether you know they're going to be technically good and they're used to playing on. Kind of go to like Brentford when it's literally snowing. And literally, yeah, literally technical performance. And by all accounts, he did, didn't he? He's got the right attitude towards playing. So he 
it sounds like he's going to be a good squad. Well, he's clearly remember. got something about him because he's 20 and he's the captain of the under-23s. I know yeah. it's a title development squad, whatever you want to call it, but he's clearly got some kind of leadership qualities about him and, and, and from a midfield position, that's, that's not a bad thing. Um, we've got Dixon in from York as well. He's come on for, for the remainder of the season. Um, opportunity for him to put himself in the shop window, as it probably is with one or two of the loan players. I know if you're not a big fan of the loan system as it is, but... Um, no, I mean, in fairness, I mean, they've sorted it out on, at the upper level, haven't they? But it's yeah. still um, at the conference level, whatever we call it these days. Um, it's, it's still the same with a lot of short-term transfers, which um, I, I quite like what I've done with it, really, you know, where you get your squad sorted at the start, you get your squad sorted in January, and that's it. Um, and it's, I know it's harder for teams who haven't got a lot of money, but I think it's, it, it's better. And unfortunately, Ferriby have been bit by the road system uh, because they've had players like Wooden and Sutton who have, done really, thing again, uh, <laughs> who have done really well for them, and then suddenly they get called back, yeah. Um, yeah. sent off somewhere else. So it, it is a shame, but um, I like Matty Dixon, he's, he's a good footballer, um, not the most mobile, um, but seen him a lot for when he was at City in the, in the reserves and when he was as it was. Um, and he's a good player. Um, good is he a more sitting midfielder or does he? Yeah, well, he's sort of a ball player from deep, uh, right. um, sort of position you find with Tom Huston, I think. Um, he likes to, he's, he's not really a ball winning midfielder, but he likes to, to play the ball out from deep. So, probably uh, a bit more ball winner, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I think so, yeah. yeah. But he's, yeah, he's a tidy footballer, so they've they brought in a lot of tidy football. I mean, I still think, regardless, I mean, the results are not great the last two weeks, but very good. They're doing brilliantly. And yeah, the budget that they've got yeah. for the squad that they started with, um, they, I know they're trying, they're trying to use a low market because they haven't got a lot of choice really. Uh, so difficult for them. I mean, um, don't know if you saw the report about Forest Green, they lost five million quid. Yeah, yeah. Um, how can therapy compete with teams who can lose five million quid um, trying to get out of that division? It's just ridiculous. So, uh, fair play to them. The fact that we've got to what, mid February, a um, couple of games will be in March. And we still with the show. I never saw that at all. So. No, absolutely. And, and like you say, you touch on the fact that um, you've got teams in even in the division below that, that conference north. There, there's probably ten teams there whose budget will absolutely dwarf their yeah. it's it's the rest, probably. <laughs> probably yeah. Yeah. the rest of the, the rest of the division. It's ironic that after years of us hearing about how Ferriby had the biggest budget and all this, it's actually quite the opposite. And I know it's been reduced year on year, but. Uh, as you say, we're definitely batting above our average, making a good fist of it. And it's fair to say that most people expect us to be rock bottom, probably yeah, yeah. and full of points. Yeah. So, I mean, three, three points from safety, basically. Yeah. Three yeah, from yeah. safety, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. We're, but we're running out of games. Yeah, but well, two, two other matches to come. I mean, on paper, they look difficult. They'll be Dover, look, are they coming to match fifth or sixth in the playoff picture? Like yeah. um, but they're a part time team as well, they're going to have an awful long way to get to this match, so you never know. Um, yeah. I think I just think with, you know, with the options coming back into the squad like Temple. All of a sudden, the Ferriby team looked an awful lot stronger than has in the last couple of weeks. I think there's, there's, there's no choices for Steve Alton, so mm -hmm. And Lincoln have to come on Tuesday night for playing at Burnley on Saturday, don't they? Or whatever that game is in the FA Cup. So, you know, they're going to have to go from a Premier League crown that to come into so I'm not very willing to walk down the, the path to get to the changing room. You, you just never know, that's going to find them, innit? I hope they're going to have 90 minutes of chasing the ball as well. So, yeah. so <laughs> you, you, you just never know, do you? you know, there's, no, a, no. there's a time to play Lincoln. She was going to not find one. Yeah. Possibly. As long as they're not going to win up <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if they win that Burnley, they can take their eye off the ball. Maybe so. I mean, yeah. it's just that, you know, you, you've either that or they'll all be celebrating with the beer yeah. when they score a winner like that guy from Corby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think Ferriby got to take three points from one of these two games coming up. Uh, and, and I feel quite the confidence that's a fair chance. Yeah, I won't disagree with that. Yeah, Pete, you want anything as well? No, it's just not many games left. And uh, it's just, it's the same with any team in the relegation zone. You've got to start converting a few points. I suppose the Geisley game coming up is another one where they might be able to get something. Yeah, that's the proverbial six, six point this month. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, to, just looking at the league, it's, it's sort of like 20th place is mid to month, 32 games, 30. Southport, 32, 30. Geisley, 31, 29. York, 31, 27. Would have thought, you know, being one place behind York, you'd have thought, wow. Yeah. Yeah, touchdown yeah. now, we have a satellite. And then Ferriby at the bottom with 32-27. It's very close, but we do need to win a game or two. 
I, th I think our, our Achilles heel, and like you say, it struck again on Saturday, and the, and the Saturday before that was the fact that we, we, we simply don't score enough goals. I, I think the goal yeah. difference off from me is minus 27. Yeah, well, I was looking, um, ironically, before the Southport game, um, and if you took the top seven leagues, uh, Ferriby were the second lowest scorers in all of them. Really? Only Oldham in League One. I think Oldham had 13, Ferriby had 14. And then, funnily enough, I just noted that, and then Ferriby went to Southport scored four. <laughs> Which is impressive, but that's like, you know, that's nearly a third of their season's goals yeah. in one game, in one game. And, yeah. and that really is the that really is the problem. Is that it's not that they don't score enough goals because I think they score another ten and it won't be enough goals. Yeah. It's frustrating because the players are there, aren't they? You know, Thomason has shown they can do it on his level. Curtis Bates is coming back with fitness and kind of Ted and his inside off quite regularly. Yeah. The lone players that have got a goal in them, it's just it's just not happening, is it? I don't know. It's just, no. it's just no. it's annoying because I think. You know, given, like I said, the budget issue and all that type of thing, Steve Alchem's put together a decent squad and he's done what he can with the money there. And he's brought in players who are capable, but it's just not dropping. No. No, they've got to score goals. And at the moment, I mean, the squad that they've got, they're really young. Mm -hmm. They're really fit and they can play the sort of high pressing, um, you know, really work like, like they want to, want to work for 90 minutes and constantly on them to get back into position to, to, to work. And they can do that, but it's just it's pointless if you don't score goals because the best you're going to get is a nil-nil draw, um, and that's a, that, that is a real shame. Because like I say, I, I think I, I would fancy Thompson and Bateson to be scoring every yeah. week. I think we'll give a special shout to Darren Stamp, haven't we? As well, who came on in the last ten minutes, went clear to one yard, and just fell over. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he didn't, he didn't video it. Yeah. <laughs> no, there was nobody there with a video of just that. Camera members yeah. at all road, but <laughs> Stampy often does a tenor not to mention that. So, yeah, right. yeah, if, if this does get back to Stampy, it was Nick Quantrill that <laughs> rubbish you there, Stampy. Sorry, I thought he was very unlucky. Very unlucky. <laughs> yeah, that's not what he said earlier. <laughs> Thoughts on Rory and his move? Yeah, well, I, yeah. Think, I think that proves, I mean, you know, as much as Rick's been said about the kind of the drawbacks of the loan system, that kind of proves, you know, the, the plus side of it, doesn't it? Because I don't think without coming to North Fed for the season, he would have got three and a half years that's come for. No, you know, he's, yeah. he's come to very much improve what a good player he is. Yeah. Um, and he's kind of, he fully deserves to go to scum on that length of video and, and record grievance. No, but he deserves to go to scum <laughs> Well, after three and a half years, that's probably GBH territory. Hopefully he can stay in up and just commute. Yeah. Um, he's a cracking goalkeeper, Rory. Really good at that um, City and letting him go. Um, I'm really sure of interest in keeping him. Um, because he's still only, I think, he's just turned 21. Just turned 20, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 20. Yeah, yeah he's, um, he's a really good goalkeeper. They've got City have got Will Manning coming through, which yeah. is, is kind of why Rory's been allowed to go. But he's gone out and he's shown, I mean, as, 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 as good potential as, as Manning's got, Rory's out there and he's doing it every week. And my problem with the low system isn't, it isn't anything to do with low. I think, I think it's great, it's a great move for him, but I just think that it should be, uh, that they should be long term loans or not at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, Rory definitely, definitely proves that it works. When you get out and you can play games, you can impress. So. Uh, not enough to get moved to a decent club, but it's funny, sorry. Well, it, yeah, like you say, it's a, it's a living into it, as a, you know, it's a, it's a, well, <laughs> it's a professional contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, like we were saying there, I think he may well come back to Bayern City in the backside, might he? You know, 10 years down the line, we'll have a look at back at his career and think, you know, he's had a decent career in the top two divisions, even possibly, you know, we could have had him on the City for many years. And it's, you know, someone's made a judgment call out between him and, and Manu. Yeah. As I, and that's kind of what yeah. you're living down by. But yeah, I think Roy's going to have a really good career. Well, fair to so, say, he's doing a good shout for, for a championship club. Yeah. Yeah. And my surprise is Nick's mentioned Scunthorpe without mentioning Ted Lewis. There you go. Get Carter. Yeah, get him. Yeah. He's from Hull, Ted Lewis. He's from Hull, but he wrote Essentially. Jack's Return Home, which was... The film Get Carter. The, the film Get Carter, and it was set <laughs> in Scunthorpe. This is the literary section. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put the line blocks between me and Rick. Yeah, we're just raising it. Just it raising the levels a bit there. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. impressed that could spell the book. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, what else have I got on my notes? Um, no, that was it. Just typical therapy, really. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was it. It was just a quote from the lads that following Ferriby. I don't know if it was Sam that wrote it or Jack. Um, I'm probably paraphrasing them, but it was that we could have played all day and not scored. So let's hope this weekend we put that right and stick a couple past over at least and then uh, get another three points on the board and, and make a good fist of it. We'll Safe to say we'll all be there cheering them on. Yep. Um, right, that's the end of part one. part one, if we're doing it in sections. Uh, we'll be back after the break. 
Pete's inadvertently scarfed just for <laughs> continuity purposes. We'll be back afterwards with talk of everything Hull City. Stay tuned.